Yeah, so actually you brought up, can you guys hear me? You brought up a few, um, I have some questions in regards to some of the things that you brought up. Um, and one of them is you, you spoke to the emissions and the gigatons and the wavy and the this and the that. And what I really would like to know is what does all this mean for, for example, um, for Spain? What can people in the south of Spain expect within the next 20 or 30 years? Certainly it will affect people right here. Can we bring it home to them? How will their lives change? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, Spain and a lot of Europe um, endured some major heat waves again this summer. You know, in, in, in 2013, 2003, we had 70,000 people in Europe killed, mostly in France, from, from heat waves. The, what happened this last summer, you can follow it clearly. If you go to a, a website like Earth Null School, N-U-L-L -L School, you can actually look and see what happened. And the heat built up over the Sahara Desert, and that heat, that heat dome crossed the Mediterranean, so it's very dry in the Sahara. So you get a massive heat dome over, over the Sahara, very dry. Then it, then it moved northward and it crossed the Mediterranean, picking up moisture as it went. Then it hit Europe with the heat and with the moisture. So you can see this ridge of the jet stream moving right up northward into Europe, bringing that heat wave. So some, there's, there's a strong possibility that that heat, that that um, would become more of a, a permanent situation. And if that's the case, then Spain will be Sahara Desert North, basically. Okay. Very much, much drier place. So right now, um, as we know in our current political, socio-geopolitical era, era, Spain has been taking on a lot of climate migrants. And what it seems that you are suggesting is that the Spaniards themselves may be the next climate migrants in line. Yes, um, many people will become climate migrants and they have no idea or no expectation of that happening. One of the problems is, you can already see it in Spain, with a lot of the migrants from Africa coming over into Spain, Okay, within Spain, there can be a populist sort of backlash against having so many migrants. These populist backlashes tend to lead to right-wing governments who want to build walls and get, keep, the, keep immigrants out, basically. So we're seeing, this is, this is a very, very powerful human tipping point, human feedback, which makes climate change worse. Because as you get more and more right-wing governments that are against the immigration of people from climate, climate immigration, climate migrants, then they get the right-wing governments uh, also deny the existence of climate change. So all of any climate policy that Spain has may be just completely destroyed by the stroke of a pen. But this is always a problem. Um, it takes a lot of time to set up policy and to do work to cut emissions. But a right-wing government can come in on, on, on day one when they're elected with a stroke of a pen, they can destroy everything that the previous government has done. So stuff is destroyed a lot quicker than it's created. Wow, that's a powerful lesson in karma, actually. Um, due unto others, I suppose. Uh, I just have a question uh, for you. Actually, Peter, um, I, I had a question in regards to the Arctic. Um, how do you get people to care about the Arctic? When they see the Arctic, they see ice, they see nothing there. How does it relate to people's lives? Why should they care? Okay, well, well, you get that phrase, you know, what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. People need to realize that. But I think we have to move to Peter here in the slides. Okay. okay, back to the Arctic. What you're looking at is the Arctic on the 9th of July in this year, 2019. And this is a satellite data which is interpreted to show the sea surface temperature. So the red is a high sea surface temperature and the blue is cold. So you can clearly see this big tongue of warmer sea surface encroaching further and further into the Arctic. Now the millions of square miles of Arctic summer sea ice is a reflective shield against the sun's heat for the frozen Arctic and the temperate northern hemisphere. That's the physics of the thing. 
Therefore, the Arctic sea ice and the frozen carbon that uh, uh, has allowed until recently to stay frozen has allowed, in fact, the amazing richness of life on Earth on which we live and enjoy to flourish. That's the Arctic sea ice. It's also, the Arctic sea ice has also allowed the great success of Northern Hemisphere agriculture. What you're seeing here is 2019 global warming. This is from the World Meteorological Organization published just last month in November. So that is the uh, one plus degree C of warming that uh, Paul referred to. But these maps show dramatically that the fastest warming is occurring over the permafrost of Alaska and Siberia. The temperature limits, the 1.5 degree survival imperative and 2 degrees C in fact, triggers multiple Arctic interreinforcing feedback. And these also become planetary tipping points. These feedbacks amplify global temperature increase, which leads, if we carry on with the insanity of those emissions, which inevitably leads to an irreversible hothouse Earth and runaway. So the Arctic is being heated faster than anywhere else. And this is the latest on that temperature. This is from the NOAA, uh, December of 2018. And you can see that here from 1900 up to 2019. But if we look at it from 1980 to 2019, just look at that graph. Look at the dramatic divergence of the Arctic temperature and the global temperature. And as the global warming increases, so does the divergence. So the Arctic temperature is accelerating faster and faster and faster. So there's an image from the Climate Emergency Institute that shows the catastrophic loss of Arctic summer sea ice. You see on the left of my image the intact Arctic and you have Arctic cooling and Northern Hemisphere temperate because that is the air conditioner of the entire Northern Hemisphere. On the right, you see an image in which all of that Arctic sea ice has been removed in the summer and instead of cooling, you have heating. You have exactly the opposite. There are multiple enormous Arctic sources of feedback that amplify temperature and as I've said, these are planetary tipping points and there's one image of them. So the feedbacks are Arctic sea ice in the summer, Arctic snow in the spring to summer, wetlands in the subarctic, permafrost in the Arctic, boreal forest. And so there is a lot of Arctic feedbacks which have already been triggered by our uncontrolled global warming. There's a fairly simplified uh, polar view of the enormous Arctic sources of carbon feedback emissions in the dark blue brown there you see permafrost and subarctic wetlands and uh, they hold more than double they hold more than double all the carbon in the atmosphere. Uh, there's a more complicated image I won't go through that but enormous Arctic sources of amplifying feedback. So there you see the map of the permafrost. The purple is permafrost, and the uh, vast, vast amounts of permafrost, particularly in Siberia. There's my nine million square miles, there's nine million square miles of permafrost in the Arctic, and left with the Arctic sea ice intact, and right with the Arctic sea ice gone. So uh, this is an illustration showing Arctic feedback tipping points, the domino effect to hothouse Earth. Actually, the uh, world leading Arctic expert from Spain, Carlos Duarte, uh, published excellent papers on these. This shows we have sea ice melt pushing snow cover melt 
pushing or warming wetlands, pushing thermal thawing permafrost, and eventually also pushing subsea methane. This is a planet killing situation. Right. Now I'm going to go over two very important 2019 Arctic research papers very quickly that are crucial to a livable planet for the day's children worldwide and to all of us, our common future survival or humanity and all life on the planet. Two papers. The first one on when will the summer Arctic sea ice disappear. According to this one as early as 2045, but actually I'll show you the image next and you'll see it's quite possible that Arctic summer sea ice will have disappeared for part of the year, September, by 2030. People, that's no time away at all. And the second paper um, is one that shows and calculates that the loss of Arctic summer sea ice is equivalent to another one trillion tons of carbon dioxide. You put those two papers together we are on a route to oblivion. There's that uh, image where you can see that there actually is projected from these models um, a collapse of Arctic summer sea ice after 2020. Maybe you can see that. So here's Runaway. There are multiple Arctic reinforcing global warming feedbacks. They are cascading. They push each other harder and harder and harder. That leads to hothouse earth. And hothouse earth leads to runaway global heating and climate chaos. And uh, that circular situation that you see there, that's the ultimate vicious cycle. And it goes on and on and on until runaway. And we have to stop our global warming emissions in order to avoid runaway. Greta Thunberg was right. She's right by the science, right by the science of the Arctic in particular. Our emissions have to stop. This shows permafrost. This is a uh, another recent paper of this year, 2019, and that shows how Arctic permafrost temperature, you're looking at the permafrost temperature, uh, suddenly increased in 2014, I'm, I'm sure you can see that. Currently, thawing permafrost is emitting methane, it's emitting carbon dioxide, rather a lot of carbon dioxide, and it's emitting nitrous oxide. All three main greenhouse gases are being emitted as feedback from the Arctic, which is adding to our own constant greenhouse gas emissions. So the Arctic has switched from a net carbon sink to a carbon source. That is a dramatic change for the entire planet. That was reported first by the NOAA in 2016. Two papers have since been published that confirm that the Arctic is no longer sinking carbon on a net basis. It is now a source of carbon. And as long as we push that Arctic amplified temperature higher and higher and higher, the Arctic is going to be a greater and greater source of carbon, both as carbon dioxide and as methane. That's an illustration from the report. So now Arctic planetary tipping points. So there's an illustration of that. Have a time up. I will finish. Thank you.